On February 14th, 2018, um, my classroom, which was 1216, was the first classroom that was shot into. I happen to have probably three students with me in the hallway when the fire alarm went off. I heard a commotion in the hallway. I looked out of my door and a couple of my students came running by and they stated they're shooting us. It was the end of the, you know, the, sort of 20 minutes of the end of the period and that's when we heard loud shots right outside the, the hallway. Um, I was a third classroom that was shot into and uh, just, I'm sorry, just sometimes thinking about it is, um, it's difficult. What you're told over and over again is that there's a new normal, and that is absolutely true. New normal, no happy Valentine's Day. It's not like, oh, I'm okay, and I'm back to normal, and all that. I don't think any of that. I think there's been like a substantial amount of challenges that also came after that shooting. Being more alert, for sure, when it comes to whether it's a fire drill at school, whether it's me being in a public place, sort of checking exits, seeing what's going on. When I go and I sit in a classroom, I sit away from the windows. I'm very, very careful with how I speak to people now, if anything. I mean, it opens your eyes to the craziness of the world. Before all this, I think I just lived a little more freely, carefree, not really, you know, stopping in my foot, in my uh, tracks to say, well, be a little careful in this crowd, it's a lot of people, but looking over my shoulder. I used to not do those things, and now I'm more cautious and careful in certain surroundings and certain situations. Changes that I've seen since is just the more presence of security, more secure schools. Uh, you know, kids have made comments, oh, it's like a prison now, it's like a prison now. Yeah. As a reminder, all of our codes for emergency situations were changed this school year. As the new school year dawns upon Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, many students are coming back to find that campus security has changed in more ways than one. This year, MSD regained direct control of the security team from the district. With that change, MSD as well as the Greater Broward County Public School System has started to implement new methods of keeping its students safe. If there's an issue, we could deal with it directly as opposed to going through a supervisor who then has to relay the message to security staff. Some of the changes made to campus security include metal detectors at sports games, the addition of five new security guards, and the renaming of all color codes. While some of these changes are made by the district, most of them were made by and for MSD. I feel decently safe at MSD. I, th I think our security guards have it down if someone tries to break into the school, and I think we won't have any problems henceforth. But I do understand why they're doing it. It's for our safety, and I really have to respect that. Um, seeing schools all locked up tight and less freedom, you know, that's kind of sad, but it's a sad reality that we have to live with. There's more of a focus on mental health for the healing aspect, which I think is huge. We have the Wellness Center on site, which is a great resource for students, um, a place for them to talk and to um, get perspective of their emotions. I think it's a very helpful tool. It's a new school year at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High, and with it, a new program. The Wellness Center has been installed to help kids that need support and someone to listen. We've had a fair amount of students. Um, some of them are responding to um, stress and anxiety um, about coming back. I do feel that that is uh, initially because we're restarting, and I do expect that to, um, to get easier for them and for us. This would be a tool I'd consider using in the future because I think that for a lot of people, um, they don't really have an outlet in their life to talk about problems or they might not feel comfortable talking about the problems with the people they do know, so I think it, it's really good. We're here to work with the students and the families and the teachers so that, so that they can go back to functioning in a way that they feel comfortable and they want to and be here on campus and feel okay. The other thing on campus is we have River. And I think he, um, River, she is um, a wonderful addition that brings great joy to the staff as well as the students. My new normal is that, you know, I have this amazing dog that's with me all the time. 
and she brings a great deal of comfort to me, the students and the teachers, um, everyone. People just have to look at her and they feel better. They don't necessarily have to pet her. Here at Stoneman Douglas, it isn't uncommon to see a student or staff member who's gone through the approval process to bring their pet to school. You have to have a 504 plan in order to get approved, so it takes a while for the school to assess you and decide if you're eligible for a 504 plan. Uh, after that, it goes to the county and then it gets approved. You get a dog that you think has the temperament for uh, wanting to be around people and making people feel better, so we, we got the gift of River. Most people have a smile on their face when they see River and they want to pet her and they ask me, can I pet her? And I say, yes, that's what she's here for. I can't overstate the value of having the dogs on campus. The voices of the students here and teenagers in general have made such a difference in the country. Fresh for Our Lives is a movement of young people from across the country that are dedicated on using uh, civic engagement and voter education to register young people to vote and help vote in morally just leaders uh, that fight to protect kids uh, and keep us safe in our schools and outside of our schools as well from gun violence. After four years, March for Our Lives has held another nationwide march. Following the senseless acts of gun violence in Uvalde, Texas, Buffalo, New York, and countless other mass shootings across the country, this youth-led organization has sprung into action to fight for gun reform in America. About 400 marches took place across the country on June 11th, from local marches in Coral Gables and Weston, all the way to Washington, D.C., including the organization's place of origin in Parkland, where over 3,000 people showed up in support of March for Our Lives. Attendees heard powerful and moving words from gun violence survivors, activists, and family of victims that emboldened them to take action to make our community safe against gun violence. One of the speakers, Debbie Hickson, who lost her husband, Chris Hickson, in the Parkland shooting in 2018, encourages people to vote for change. Um, that you have to put your vote where your uh, mouth is if you want to have a safer community. If you believe that we deserve better in America, you have to vote for better. You have to actually vote for legislators that are going to pass um, or to enact laws that are going to make our community safer. I really hope so. I think that I, you know, all the people here, they're strong and we're united and we're ready and we're fighting. And I think that that is enough to change the world. I, I think we've changed the conversation on this. We've made it so that uh, the answer to gun violence isn't just sending your thoughts and prayers, but it's about what are your policies and actions that come afterwards. And I think that's the real big shift that we've had. Since February 14th, the person I was is no longer. You're never that person again because you don't see the world the same again. I don't think that person will ever reemerge just because of the work that I've had to put in to get to where I'm at now. I'm still discovering who I am after, um, but no, I'm definitely changed. I appreciate my time more and I make more time for fun and more time for the good things. I'm on the right path. I, um, you know, I prioritize self-care and I, I do things that make me happy and make me feel good. And I surround myself with people who are positive impacts, make a positive impact in my life. I, I, uh, I just started learning how to be around loud noises and people again. Um, and it's five years in, so I think I think taking our time is, is the best way that we all go back to February 13th. I'm closer to February 13th today than I was yesterday. The help of my family, the help of, of experts, with the help of you know my friends here especially, the close-knit group of friends I have, colleagues there at the school. I think we all support each other and we all heal in different ways. And um, I think I'm as close to whole as I've been since the event that day. I felt 
very fortunate uh, after that and wanted to try to do something that would, would, would help others, you know, more. And so my friends and I worked uh, mainly on on building the school garden and working on that and having that as a place where, where, where kids and faculty and staff could come and, and uh, kind of get away from things and get out in nature a little bit when they were having a stressful time. So. Marjorie's Garden is known today as a peaceful environment on campus where students can go to get some fresh air and to appreciate nature. This once empty plot of land started its beautiful journey of growth with Mr. Jeter with partnership of Mr. Simpson and help of members around the community. This garden continues to grow and be renovated as a part of this Douglas community. The original inspiration, uh, first of all, was just having the portables be torn out. We used to have a whole field full of portables and they were being torn out and I saw all of this vacant land and so I ran it by Mr. Thompson like, can we maybe set aside some of that space for science purposes, perhaps a garden or something. Marjorie's garden has expanded tremendously over the past few months with additions like new seating area, a fountain, new plants, and leave a book, take a book, where there are free books available for students to read. Jeter was my inspiration. You know, that's how it started. We decided to do this garden together and it's just grown. It's grown to be a technological place, a restful place, a reflective place. We grow food. I eat some of the food from the garden all the time. Always lots of new additions to the garden. Right now, Mr. Tracy and his engineering classes are building a bunch of benches for our classroom area, so we're really expanding that. With the new seating areas, Marjorie's Garden has transformed into a place where students can go to and feel at peace. We have many things across campus, both on the interior of campus and on the perimeter of our campus, to honor the victims um, from 2014-2018. One of the most recent things that was constructed is the semicircular wall, which is a monument that um, has a plaque for each of the victims who lost their life on that day. Um, across campus, we have our rock garden with messages of hope and love and remembrance. We also have our big eagle, Tony, that was given to the school um, very soon after the tragedy that sits right outside of 700. Um, in addition, there is the garden that is on the corner of Holmberg and Pine Island Road, which is kept up by several members of the community. And um, we have some, some rocks and things in there remembering the victims. Anyone can be a hero. Ms. Riovan, an AP Psychology teacher here at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, helped create a beacon of light in her community with Project Grow Love. Project Grow Love is a memorial garden that was created by me and Tori Gonzalez. Uh, it was actually conceived on Christmas Eve 2018, and it was something that we felt was needed in the community um, because there really was no place to go um, for people outside of school, outside of campus, to go where they could sit and reflect and um, pay the respects and honor and remember the 17 fallen eagles. Although started by Ms. Riovan and a student, Project Grow Love just wouldn't be possible without the help of members from the community. Because Project Grow Love is uh, a memorial garden for the community, it really is a labor of love, and it's still, it's, it's, it's thriving. Your healing is your own, and, and the responsibility for that healing is your own. And with that is hope. I feel hopeful that, um, that as time goes on, that maybe it, I'll be even stronger um, and, you know, maybe one day I won't have as many, you know, as many symptoms of the PTSD. I, I, th I think that we're on a different, in a different era now, and we're, we're never going to forget, but we also are, you know, we're moving along and it's a, it's a different time now.
You know, our community is so resilient. And um, in the wake of the incredible tragedy that was suffered, everybody banded together and um, really just supported one another. And you see that, you saw that then and you see that now. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. We are a strong community. We are a strong school and um, we'll continue to be that and only get stronger.